Welcome to another great along. Today we are taking this clip and turning it into this using a technique called bleach bypass. I won't go into why the technique is called what it is, but I'll show you an easy way to do it in DaVinci Resolve. And that's a really cool way to achieve this black and white look that looks a lot more contrasty and a lot more powerful than what you just get by turning down the situation. So as always, you can download this clip as well by buying my footage pack, I'll link it down below. And also you can download the power grade if you want that as well, that'll be linked down below. So let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and get started. We are inside DaVinci Resolve and we've jumped straight into the color page where I've just put the clip in from the footage pack. If you want to import the power grade, you can basically just go in and say import then find the clip somewhere where you've saved it. Make sure that both the DPX and the DRX file are in there. It'll be great along four. I don't have it saved right now as I'm making this video, but I'll do it afterwards. And then you can simply just apply the grade by right clicking and clicking apply grade. And then you will have this note tree that we have over here. Let me just quickly go through the note tree. We have a color space transform in the beginning where we are converting it from Canon Cinema Gamut and Canon Log 3 into DaVinci Guide Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate. And at the end here, we have another one that converts it from DaVinci White Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate into Rec. 79 and Gamma 2.4. Now my settings are set to 4K, 30 frames per second, and my color management is set to the wrong parameters actually. So we're gonna change that to DaVinci White Gamut and Intermediate and Rec. 79 and Gamma 2.4 and hit save. Now, what this does is that it gives us more room to work with as we're working in the Vinci's color space and it's a larger color space. So it gives us more room to work with when we're using the tools here. I'll show you in the end what that does exactly, but let's just go with this for now. So it's a simple note tree, as you can see, we're going to go very simple about it. So let's just start here. We're actually going upstream all the way today. And this is just simple serial notes. So if you didn't download the power grade, you can just simply add these as serial notes, number two and number three. And for the first one here, we're just gonna add a little bit of contrast in the tone curve here. So I'm just gonna drag down the shadows a little bit and the highlights up a little bit, just to create a little bit more contrast here. For the second, or for the third note here, what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna go in and turn the saturation all the way down to zero. Now, this doesn't necessarily look particularly good. This is just a black and white image with a little bit of contrast. It is still better than the log image we had in the first place, but it's not exactly perfect yet. So what we have here is number four, it's just a serial note. But then by right clicking here and saying add node and add layer node, we get this different node down here, the second node, the fifth node. And make sure that you choose the layer node and not the parallel node. Normally we use the parallel nodes for masking when I show you how to do that. But in this case, we're using the layer node. And the difference here is that this node will be on top of the other one. So if I change something in this node, this will affect the entire image. But if I were to say, okay, I'm just gonna select a little part of it, now it would only affect the top layer while the underlying layer would remain the same. So that's the difference between the parallel and the layer node. The parallel, or the layer node applies a layer on top. In this case, it's on the bottom, but it's the top layer. And the parallel node mixes everything together. So let's just reset this node. It was a quick explanation of what it does. And we're actually more or less gonna leave these two notes alone because what we're gonna do is we're going to go into the layer mixer here and right click, use composite mode, and then go down to overlay. And already you can see we got a pretty cool look. Now for this footage, it works right away. It works exactly when we do it and we don't really have to tweak anything. But if you need to tweak it, if you're using a different clip, or if you're using something different, you can either go in and adjust the contrast a little bit to your liking if it's too far down to the blacks or too bright in the highlights, because we are stretching out the image a little bit. You can see this is the more compressed image we have here. And now applying the bleach bypass effect, we are stretching it out and creating some more contrast. In this case, it looks really good. We don't have anything that is clipping anywhere particularly. So I'm really happy with how it looks. You can also go into the fifth note here, which is the top layer before we go into that. It's basically just saying, okay, these two layers, we're just gonna overlay this note, this layer on top of this other one, on top of note four. So we're basically just applying the same clip on top of the other one as an overlay. And that's what creates this bleach bypass effect 
Now we can go in and say, okay, we want some softer shadows, or some softer highlights, if the effect is too strong right away. So that could be a way of adjusting it or using the contrast here as we did in the beginning. The only other thing I want to add could be a little bit of film grain. So let's just add that, go with something like 35 millimeters, which is just a preset. So we could strengthen it up a little bit and reduce the grain size. And if we go in, it is very, very subtle. So maybe a little bit more grain size and a little bit more strength. Something like this is very, very unnoticeable. Just going to drive it up a little bit more here. And now we can start to see it out here. I want it to be subtle, but I just want to give a little bit more texture to the look here. So this is pretty much it. This is pretty much what we're doing today. It's a quick tutorial. I just wanted to show you this super cool effect and how you can achieve a look really easily with just using the bleach bypass effect. And if we just remove the saturation and these two here, this is what we get. So maybe we should just label everything really quickly. This is DaVinci White Gamut to Rec. This is Log to DaVinci White Gamut. This is our contrast. This is our saturation. This is our Bleach Bypass 1 and Bleach Bypass 2. This is our grain. And that's pretty much it. Now, I promise you, I would just tell you why we're doing the log to DaVinci White Gamut and then DaVinci White Gamut to Rec. 709. So let me just quickly show you why that is. So let's make another note down here and just copy this, which will then be our log to Rec. So let's turn off these two and just work with this one. Set our parameters to Canon Cinema Gamut and Canon Log Free. And now you can see the look is a lot stronger. It doesn't look as soft because we have less space to work with. Now we're still going from lock. So we're still working in the Canon lock free workspace here, which is still a good and large color space. It's just not as large as the winter white gamut. So we don't have as much room to work with. So the effects that we apply will be applied more strongly than if we are working inside of this color space. So that's the main difference if we go from this and back to this, you can see the effect is applied softer and I think it looks a lot better. So that is basically just to show you what the difference is with this technique. I'm gonna delete this note again because it's not actually part of our note tree. And that is pretty much it for today, for this video. I think it's a really cool effect. I think it's a really cool look and it just spices up that black and white look a little bit more than if you just turn the saturation down and played around with the contrast. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something and I hope you can use it. And until the next time, take care.